Hello! I'm pleased to announce that as of August 18th, 2021, I have seen 2,000 movies. Wait, you ask, how could I possibly know this? Well, when I was 14 years old, I decided to start keeping a list of every movie I watched. I immediately realized that this presented a few challenges, such as what exactly constituted a movie? How could I remember all the movies I'd already seen? And besides the title, what information should I include on my list? And that first challenge was more involved than you might think. Most dictionaries weren't much help defining a movie as a series of motion pictures shown in a theater or on television, and then defining motion picture as a synonym for movie. So I made my own definition. I would include on my list any series of moving images that met or exceeded 60 minutes in viewing time and identified itself as a movie, motion picture, or film. This definition had multiple benefits. For example, it excluded things such as music videos, commercials, and most TV episodes, things that are generally not considered movies. It also excluded short films, which I fully concede are movies, but I had seen so many of them, and even created some of them, so I didn't want to clutter my list with those. The definition also excluded creations such as wedding videos and webinars, which, though they're often over 60 minutes long, don't build themselves as movies. There are some TV episodes that are over 60 minutes long, but again, they also don't identify as movies either. And at first, I did include TV miniseries, but I later deleted them, moving them to their own list, under the rationale that they're called miniseries, and not maxi-movies, after all. I also decided the mode of viewing was irrelevant. Regardless of whether I watched the movie in a theater, or on a television, on a phone, or even projected onto the side of a building, it still counted as having seen the movie. Second, how could I remember all the movies I had already seen? Well, I started simply enough. I just began writing down the titles of every movie I could remember seeing. Then as the years went on, I simply added movies as I watched them. When I was in my early 20s, I checked out from the library Leonard Maltin's Movie Guide, which lists thousands of movies along with brief synopses. I paged through the book, pausing at any title that looked familiar. Often this was enough to remind me of the movie that I had seen years earlier, so I added that to my list. But if that wasn't sufficient, I read the synopsis following the title to see if that could help me determine if I'd seen the movie. If I still wasn't sure, then I just left the movie off my list. It's true that I might have seen that movie when I was very little. Actually, in all likelihood, my dad probably sat me on his lap when I was three years old, and we watched some B-movie one boring Saturday afternoon. But if so, I have no memory of it. And if I can't recall the movie at all, then can I really say that I've seen it? I also scanned the shelves of a couple video rental stores to ensure that I hadn't missed anything. For a few years, every once in a while, I would be reminded of a movie I had seen, but had initially forgotten to put on my list. So I added those. But I'm very certain it's complete now. For the past 20 plus years, I simply add a movie to my list after I've completed viewing it. Third, what should I include in my list besides the title? Clearly, more than just the title is needed to identify a movie, for the simple reason that some movies have the exact same title as other movies. So at first I added in three pieces of other information. The year of the film's release, the director, and I listed only the first build director in cases where there were multiple directors, and the runtime. Later I added a personal rating, ranging from zero, which meant I felt the film had no value at all, to ten, which I bestowed upon films that I found supremely engaging. Later, I added in columns to indicate if the movie was animated, a documentary, a silent film, a made-for-TV movie, or a non-English film. Later still, I added in the year in which I had first completed seeing the film. For films that I saw prior to my fifth birthday, I lumped those all together in that single year. And if I see a movie more than once, the only change I make is a change to the rating, if I feel that's warranted. Even the titles, though, took a bit of thinking. For example, sometimes the title of a movie has changed over time. Do I list the movie as Star Wars? Or as Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, for example? Also, for non-English films, do I use the English title? Or the title in the film's original language? In both of those cases, I use the original title. And for the non-English films, I would put the English title in parentheses afterward when needed. For example, the Motorcycle Diaries on my list is under the D's, since the title in the original Spanish begins with a D. And finally, what about films with numbers at the start of their title? Once again, I listed it exactly as the movie was billed. So, 12 Angry Men, with 12 written as numerals, and 101 Dalmatians, with 101 written as numerals, appear at the beginning of my alphabetical list, prior to the letter A. 
while movies such as Three Men and a Baby appear down in the T's, since three is spelled out. Now here's the thing I noticed as the years went by and my list expanded. I could parse out all manner of details about the movies I'd seen. For example, I could sort the list to determine what was alphabetically the first movie I'd ever seen in the theater. Or I could find out what was the longest movie I'd seen from the 1960s. I could even figure out how many animated movies I'd seen in the last 10 years that begin with the letter S, if I was so inclined. Here then are some stats from my list of the 2,000 movies that I've seen. I've seen 150 animated films. This excludes movies that are largely live action but have some animation, such as Mary Poppins or Cool World, but it includes movies that are almost entirely animation with just a bit of live action, such as Fantasia or WALL-E. I've also seen 95 documentaries, 125 non-English films, 43 silent films, and nearly all of these silent films were released prior to 1932, the only exceptions being 1976's Silent Movie and 2011's The Artist. And I've also seen 54 made-for-TV movies. Though most of the films I have seen have been American productions, I've also seen films that were created in Canada, the United Kingdom, Ireland, New Zealand, and Australia. Non-English language films I've seen include films from Argentina, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Brazil, China, the Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Germany, India, Iran, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Mongolia, Poland, Russia, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, and Sweden. I've seen at least one movie from every year since 1911. I've also seen at least 10 movies from every year since 1971. The year from which I've seen the most movies is 2003. I've seen 64 movies that were released that year. Second place is 1999, with 62 movies. The oldest movie I've seen is Dante's Inferno from 1911. The newest movie on my list is The Suicide Squad, which was released on July 30th, 2021. 417 of the movies I've seen were released prior to the day I was born, and 1,582 of the movies were released after my birthday. And if you want to know my exact birth date, just know that one movie on my list, Nashville, was released the day I was born. The year in which I watched the most movies is 2017, when I saw 185 movies, an average of more than one movie every other day. Second place is 2004, when I watched 92 movies. There is a seven-way tie for the shortest movie on my list. After Different Strokes, When the Laughter Stopped, The God Who Wasn't There, How Beer Saved the World, The Navigator, The Pleasure Garden, Refrigerator Mothers, and Tarzan of the Apes all clock in at a mere 60 minutes, meaning they are the shortest possible length the movie can be and still be on my list. At the other extreme are five movies I have seen that clock in at over 3 hours and 40 minutes. They are Gone with the Wind and Lawrence of Arabia, which are both 222 minutes long, Lagan, which is 224 minutes, Woodstock, which is 228 minutes long, and the champion of lengthy films on my list, Cleopatra, which lasts an agonizing 243 minutes. The average length of movies on my list is just over 111 minutes. To watch every movie on my list one time then would take 222,615 minutes which is just over 154 days. I've seen 28 movies with titles that begin with numbers that are numerically written out. Alphabetically then, the first movie on my list is 222. But if you don't want to include movies with number titles, then the first movie is A Bout de Soufflé. That, of course, is the French title for the film Breathless. So if you don't want to count that either, arguing that it should be down in the Bs, then alphabetically the first movie on my list is About a Boy. The last movie on my list is Zulu Dawn. 212 of the movies I've seen, accounting for over 10% of all the movies on the list, begin with the letter S. Second place is the letter B, with 151 movies. The least represented first letter is Q. I've only seen seven movies that start with the letter Q. Quantum of Solace, The Queen, The Quiet Man, A Quiet Place, Quills, Quiz Show, and K. Vadas. X is in second place. I've seen ten movies that start with the letter X. I've seen 265 movies at the theater, though not all of those were my first time viewing the movie. Movies I've seen at the theater include at least one movie with titles beginning with each letter of the alphabet, except Y. Alphabetically, the first film I've seen in the theaters is Fifty First Dates, unless again we don't include numbered titles, in which case the alphabetically first film I saw at the theater is Adam. 
And the last movie, alphabetically, that I've seen at the theaters is Zombieland Double Tap. The oldest movie I've seen at the theater is Modern Times from 1936. The most recent movie I've seen at the theater is Black Widow, which I saw on July 31st, 2021. The 2000th movie I saw was The Cannonball Run, a movie I purposely selected as my 2000th since it was one of my father's favorites, and I happened to own four Hot Wheel Cars merchandise from the movie. The 1000th movie I saw was Sound and Fury, a documentary I viewed on October 9th, 2004, meaning it took me 16 years, 10 months, and 9 days to see an additional 1,000 movies. The shortest titled movies on my list are Almost, 8 and a half, 10, 21, CQ, Go, IQ, K9, Pi, and Up, but all of those are just a bit too long in the title and lose out to M and Z. The longest titled movie I've seen was, for a long time, Those Magnificent Men in Their Flying Machines, or How I Flew from London to Paris in 25 Hours 11 Minutes. But I recently watched Borat Subsequent Movie Film, Delivery of Prodigious Bride to American Regime for Make Benefit Once Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. So now that's easily the longest titled film I've seen. It has 127 characters, including the spaces. The most represented director on my list is Alfred Hitchcock. He directed 52 feature films. I've seen them all. Second place is Steven Spielberg. I've seen 25 of his films. Third place is Ron Howard with 19 films. I've also seen every movie that has won the Academy Award for Best Picture and more than half of all the films that have ever been nominated for Best Picture. I've also seen every movie that appears on the American Film Institute's original 100 Years, 100 Movies list from 1998 and their updated list from 2007. I've seen every film that has ever topped Sight & Sound's critics' top 10 poll and their director's top 10 poll, and the top 25 films on Internet Movie Database's top 250 list. I've also seen every film that's held the record as the all-time box office champ, as well as the highest grossing G, PG, PG-13, R, and NC-17 motion pictures. I've watched movies while sitting outside, while sitting in a hot tub, while in bed, while riding in a car, on a bus, on a cruise ship, on an airplane, in elementary school, junior high school, senior high school, technical college, undergraduate and graduate school, and while on company time. I've also watched movies in Connecticut, Florida, Georgia, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, North Dakota, Ohio, Oregon, Tennessee, Washington, and Wisconsin. I've also seen films while in the Bahamas, Canada, Germany, and the Netherlands. I have twice seen two movies at the theaters in a single day. I've gone to the theater all by myself three times. I believe the most movies I've ever seen in a single day is four. The longest it ever took me to see a movie all the way through the first time is probably Back to the Future, which I began viewing while at my cousin's house in 1987. 101 minutes into the 111 minute flick, my parents decided it was time to go home. I finally saw the last 10 minutes in 1989. It was worth the two year wait. The movie I've seen the most times is either Grease, Footloose, or Teen Wolf, all of which my sister watched incessantly when we were kids, so much so that I practically have them memorized. As I've said, I also rank each film from 0 to 10. Several of the lowest ranking films that I've seen are either films that won the Oscar for Best Picture or that I had to watch for school. The reason for this is that, normally, if I'm watching a movie that I find so utterly bad, so devoid of entertainment value, I generally just stop watching it. But in these two cases, I had to force myself to watch the movies to their end, either because I was a completist or because I wanted a good grade. Here then is a random sampling of films that received each rating from 0 to 10. Cats, Sharknado 4, The Fourth Awakens, Noah, Batman and Robin, Top Gun, Sound of Metal, Avatar, My Cousin Vinny, Dog Day Afternoon, The Birds, Memento. Though several films tie for last place on my list, I generally cite the Academy Award winning Borefest, Hamlet, as my all-time least favorite film. My favorite silent film is The General. My favorite made-for-TV movie is Duel. My favorite documentary is Witness Underground. My favorite science fiction film is Serenity. My favorite musical is The Wizard of Oz. My favorite sequel is The Empire Strikes Back. My favorite movie lasting under 80 minutes is Rope. My favorite movie lasting over three hours is The Godfather Part Two. 
My favorite movie that won the Oscar for Best Picture is The Sting. My favorite animated film is almost The Iron Giant. I want to give them a shout out, but I'm going to go with Wally. My favorite non-English film is almost Run Lola Run and Amelie, but I'm going to give the award to Life is Beautiful. And here are the movie posters showing off every film I've awarded a perfect 10. These are all, in my opinion, near-perfect movies. If I had to select a first among equals from this group, though, I'd say my all-time favorite motion picture is Psycho. During the course of this filmlet, I've named approximately 5% of all the movies I've seen. Scrolling now is an alphabetical list of all 2,000 movies. Stay tuned for my 3,000th movie. I don't want to say the name of the Spanish movie. No, I can't pronounce that at all. Okay. And the last, alphabetically, is Zombieland 2. Well, no, that's called Zombieland Double Tap. Oh. Stay tuned for my three south.